What improved your life so much you wish you did sooner? I started viewing things as potential experiences rather than just opportunities for achievement. Before that, for example, if I took a class then I was only focused on the grade. If I couldn't get a good grade, I didn't like the class. Also, I wouldn't even start a book if I thought it might be too hard or too long and I might not finish it. Then I realized the purpose of classes and books and other things was to learn and that hard ones were likely the ones I learned the most from, even if I didn't get the best grade. I started doing all sorts of stuff with the idea that I just wanted the experience. Even if I was the worst one out there, who cares? I wasn't there for the achievement, I wanted to learn things. This worked socially as well and I started taking way more risks, telling myself that, at the very least, it would be a learning experience. I saw a saying once, it's only a failure if you stop trying, otherwise, it's an experiment. I love it. I stopped living my life just waiting for the weekend. When you work five days a week and have just two off, it's not good to be always waiting for those two days. You can plan something meaningful or fun every day, even if it's just a small thing. I started flower gardening. It's really relaxing, you will see results all summer, lots of successes and failures, but failures bring improvements. I listen to audible books while I'm at it sometimes. It's especially great if you have a desk job. Just packed up and moved thousands of miles away. Left everything behind and just started over. Besides some debt, a suitcase, and contacts for only the non-toxic people in my life, it's been an extremely liberating experience. Looking back, nothing was really preventing me from doing it sooner, no real reasons at least, I just kept coming up with excuses not to do it until one day I couldn't think of one. Finding the right therapist. Been in since I was nine years old and found the right one at twenty-three. It's only been maybe six months, but I've already unpacked so much more trauma in that small time than I did all the other years wasted in therapy. I begrudgingly started lifting weights when I was 30 due to some back pain that caused me to barely be able to get out of my office chair. I forced myself to go for a few weeks, then I started looking forward to going to the gym, then after a while I became a total gym rat. I wish I had started lifting when I was a teenager. Not only did it cure my back pain but I lost weight. Look and feel much better and the doctor says all my health indicators are spot on now as I am in my 40s and in addition it's like a hobby for me now that I tinker with and socialize with other people who are into the same thing. Setting rules for myself. After COVID started, I spent a year drinking and eating pizza every other day and at that time I thought why I shouldn't keep doing it if I enjoy it. You can die anytime so you should make the most out of what little time you have right? The problem being that it quickly becomes not enjoyable and I realize now how miserable I was during that time. Most things are only fun when you do them occasionally. Sounds obvious, I know, but it was not obvious for my dumbass. Now I have set rules for myself that I can only drink on Sundays and only eat junk food once a month, and it's so much more rewarding and fun. Moved to Washington, it literally turned my life around. I was a cab driver in Arizona and had been barely hanging on when 2008 recession hit. There were more drivers than cabs to lease. There was a lottery every day at work to see if you even got a car. My luck sucked. I ended up getting two evictions on my credit in under a year because I just couldn't pay rent. I wasn't even living paycheck to paycheck, but day to day. A friend let me stay at his place in Georgia to see if I could do better there. Sadly, it was almost worse than Arizona. I decided to ask my parents if I could stay with them and try Washington. I started doing office jobs for like $15 per hour. Then something happened. Since I was staying at parents, and kicking them some of my income for rent though it was not a lot, I was able to save money. When a job that I had gotten at $17 per hour decided to layer off the entire department I put my foot down. Unemployment and savings allowed me to say bye to the I need a job now opportunities. You know the ones, the ones with bosses and businesses just destroying the workforce. Then it happened, I found my unicorn. The company was impressed at my resume due to my ability to find a problem and create a solution to fix said problem. I got hired as a data coordinator at $19 per hour. Very shortly into that position the manager noticed my Excel skills and hired me full-time from the temp service well before contract was up at $22 per hour. After a year he promoted me and moved me to a higher skill position. I was given a raise to $56,000 per year. I quickly proved my mettle in this new environment and earn promotion to business analyst. I was bumped up to $69,000 per year. In mid-pandemic I asked for a raise after proving myself even more in that new role. 
My boss agreed and went to bat for me. He came back with a raise to $76,000 per year. With a cost of living bump in March of 2022 that has put me at $79,000 per year. In 14 years, I went from living day-to-day -day pay to having a fully funded emergency fund. I bought a condo May 2021 and have a new car that is almost paid off. My credit has skyrocketed to 769 and climbing. I have about $30,000 worth of credit cards with zero balances, and a 401k that while stunted from years of not having is getting there. The absolute biggest change is that I do not have to worry about a big bill. I don't have to put off any payments as my savings and income can handle fluctuations. It has done wonders for my life and well-being. If I had done this years earlier, just think where I might have been. Hiring a cleaner. I grew up in a house where money was tight. Whenever we heard people talking about their maid or housekeeper, we always assumed they were super rich. I'm not rich, very much middle class. But my wife and I both work full time and have a lot on our plates. We found a local person who has a small cleaning business. We keep up with day-to-day -day cleaning like dishes, laundry, immediate spills and messes, wiping things down, etc. Then once a month, a cleaner does a pass, focusing on dusting, deeper clean of the floors, bathrooms, etc. It's about the same cost as a date night, and it does so much to help us stay on top of things. For me, it was multiple things. First, I started taking walks after every meal that I could. For lunch breaks at work, I eat something while walking. Walks have allowed me all kinds of time to think about stuff, decompress, and listen to podcasts. Second, if you're like me and you're really out of shape and haven't exercised in years, put an exercise bike in front of your computer and learn to play more games with a controller. Set small goals with the thing. If you play Monster Hunter, do a hunt while pedaling as fast as you can, then do a hunt sitting in a chair, then switch back. It's difficult to describe how exhilarating it is to clear a boss for the first time, while completely out of breath and sweating all over the place. It's a truly unique feeling, and I cannot recommend it enough. Third, somebody already posted to stop arguing with random strangers on the internet, but really, I can't stress this one enough. If you see a post on a social media site that you know is going to have controversial comments below it, try and force yourself to not read the comments, unless you are going there specifically to laugh. Life is too short to get mad at people whose opinions you can't change. Fourth, this one is kind of situational, so it might not work for everyone. I live only 1.5 miles from the local grocery store and only 2.5 miles from the local mall. When gas prices started going up, I bought myself an insulated backpack and stopped driving for my shopping trips. Three mile round trip for groceries, and five miles round trip for my walks to the mall. It's forced me to buy less garbage food that I shouldn't be eating, and seriously think before I spend money at the mall. The exercise is a bonus. Fifth, bought myself a pair of sleep phones and started listening to nonverbal ASMR videos, ocean sounds, rain anything that seemed relaxing. Used to take me hours to get to sleep, now I'm usually asleep within about 30 minutes of getting into bed. Last, I quit smoking last year and while I don't feel very different, I have certainly found that I don't get as winded from basic exercises as I did before. Buying a decent mattress, a mattress topper at least. For most of my life since I hit puberty, I could never get to sleep quickly. I would roll around for hours with my eyes closed and get comfortable but could never doze off and when I woke up it was mostly just resigning myself to the fact that it was time to get out of bed whether I actually felt rested or not. I just assumed that I suffered from some kind of insomnia and there wasn't much I could do about because I wasn't about to go down the route of taking sleeping pills and all the problems that can bring. Then one day I finally decided that if I was going to spend sleepless nights awake and tossing in bed, I was at least going to be comfortable, so I bought a really nice memory foam mattress topper. I've never slept so good in my whole life and my whole world changed. I added in a good, shredded memory foam pillow and I'm in heaven. I'm out like a light in a few minutes and comfy as hell, so I wake up with tons of energy and a better outlook on life. I dedicate at least 30 minutes every day to playing with my kid. I used to just play with him sometimes and feel guilty when I couldn't, but then I realized something. I was journaling every day about my feelings and I realized that the high point of every single day was the time I spent playing pretend with him because we're both so joyful. He's six, and he's growing up way too fast, and I adore him. So even when I'm exhausted and get really busy, I now set aside other grown-up responsibilities and make a fort, pretend to be a puppy, or make a fake dinner with him in his playhouse. I forget I'm his parent, 
or an adult for a half hour and talk to him as if I were still his age. It makes him happier than anything in the world when mommy plays with him, but the real surprise was noticing that it made me happy too. That time isn't just quality time, it's something my soul treasures as downtime from the rest of my life. I genuinely enjoy it, and I think most other people would too if they would just try it. Forget how silly it makes you feel and just do it. Bought an apartment instead of renting. To be fair it was basically only a year between when I could have and when I did, and the timing was great for when I did, and I got a great interest rate. New place is nicer, it's cheaper than renting, accounting for the rental income from renting out the spare room, and my rent isn't just going into a black hole, half of it goes into an asset that I can eventually get back. Also, the place is probably worth 50% more than when I bought it in 2020. Then, a year later, getting a home gym set up. I'm still far from perfect, but it's a lot harder to excuse skipping a workout when it's a 10-second walk rather than another 10 to 20 minutes to my commute. And I don't have to find an open bench, can take proper rest between sets without feeling bad about hogging a setup for half an hour, and never have to just give up and do something else.